and Carrie here with Wyoming Sisters. Guess what? More jelly plate prints. Woo! Having too much fun. Um, these were prints that I made using the biggest jelly plate. Um, and today, Hubby and I had to run to Home, Home Depot in order to get some things for the house. Well, I went over to the paint section and I was actually looking for a brayer, a bigger brayer. I couldn't find one, but I did find these. These are seven and a half ounces and eight fluid ounces. They're half price because they're kind of like the sample rejects. Look at that color. Isn't that a gorgeous color? And look at their indoor house paints. So they're just regular acrylic paints. Um, those are really beautiful colors. And these were $1.74 a piece where a bottle of this is at least a dollar at the craft store and it's two ounces two ounces eight or seven point two five ounces so um i was kind of nervous about it i didn't know <laughs> if they would work but look at the gorgeous results Ooh, this is a pretty clean up print that i made on the jelly plate um just a few minutes ago these are actually thicker than the craft paint, so I was actually able to get some good results. Um, I could lay down a layer of this and it would dry quickly. It would be um, a heavier body and it would dry more quickly. And then it could come in with a different color and when I would pit, push the texture in, it would pick up the green but the white would stay on the plate. So I was able to get some really fun effects by mixing the different kinds. Um, this is an example of what they call a cleanup print. Um, I know the colors are really soft and subtle on this because they're both these chalky colors. So what I did is first I brayed out the white. I put the texture in the white that I wanted. On this one I used doilies and bubble wrap and these foam waste things. I got like a bingo game for the kids and I knew <laughs> I knew I could use these for something, right? Oh yeah, such a pack rat. Um, and plastic canvas to get the texture in the white paint. Let the white paint dry completely, which, you know, feels so wrong. Um, and then came in and put on a thin layer of the minty green. Let that kind of sit for a few seconds in order to bond with the white paint that was dry on the plate. And then um, put this over it to do what they call a cleanup print. Oh my gosh, too much fun. So, um, th this is a really affordable hobby once you invest in the jelly plate because you can use it again and again and again and again. Um, but I was going through all the pain I had and um, I'm thinking this will be an affordable alternative. So every time I go to Home Depot now, I'm going to be looking at the craft paint. So I really love these colors together. They're beautiful. I also mixed them with some other colors and used up some craft paint. So I'm just going to show you some of the prints that I've made real quick. You guys are probably getting sick of these jelly print videos, but um, this is my obsession right now. Um, some of these are not, you know, they're not necessarily my favorite. I really actually like the teal and the orange. I'm not a fan of orange, but these colors together contrast so nicely. Um, you can see that I've done a lot of prints using the butterflies. Um, what I'm planning on doing is I'll probably, if I use like this chunk on a card, I'm going to draw around the butterfly to give it more emphasis. So it's you know, a print is, think of it like a piece of scrapbook paper. It's just a starting off point. It doesn't need to be a finished product. product. But I am kind of enjoying um, this technique. It's really rejuvenated my creativity. This one um, picked up a lot of the layers that were left over on the plate. So it has a lot of um, neat texture to it. The orange and teal again. The red and teal look good together. Um, this one, um, because he used the bigger plate, it's not 12 by 12 square, it's a little bit bigger. So you always have this strip left over after you put on the first print. So I just layered the strips. This was just a piece of pattern paper. Um, Kathy got me this beautiful pattern paper. Um, and it's just lightweight paper. And when you put the paint on it, it really changes the texture. The pink flowers I kind of love. But um, I was putting plastic canvas on a print and then I... Um, put it on here just to clean up so that one doesn't have a lot of layers um, but that's fine I it's just adding a little bit of something like this doesn't have much paint on it I kind of like the teal flowers um, this one has a lot of layers 
This one has um, the doilies in a lighter color. Lay it on top and then really subtle print with some butterflies. I know, I love butterflies. They're fun and pretty. So I was really playing around with the butterfly stencils that I had. I'm excited. I do have some um, clear transparencies that I picked up at a secondhand store. And then I have some book report covers that are clear, heavier duty plastic. I am going to be cutting some stencils using my Cricut. So I have even more options <laughs> when I do plate printing. This one just has some subtle colors on it. Um, it this is already a piece of pattern paper, but... I really like just those those bright, vibrant neon colors layered over. Um, just really playing and having fun. This one's kind of fun. I'm thinking I could put something in the middle of the heart, um, like a sentiment or something. And how I did these hearts was I had a stencil. And it was a, a quilting stencil that I picked up at a garage sale. Oh. The little tags covered but it was 25 cents oh my gosh heavy big heavy spender and it had like this design but I noticed it was difficult to um, because it was such a solid design um, in the printing so I just cut that part out and so then I had the empty heart in the middle and it looked really pretty when I um, used it and then when I put the butterflies in the middle ooh, I really liked that so that was um, a technique I used. I cut up the stencils and I felt really naughty. But you can see there, it looks really pretty. This had um, a layer of teal on it and then I used like a white blue and, um, and was able to pick up that print. Really fun. I think that came out really pretty and girly. So some of these are really graphic and strong, but you can get um, any kind of result. This one's really fun. It picked up a lot of the variegated color that was just kind of left over on the plate. I fell in love with this. I have this little foam stamp that's like these little hearts. Really loved how pretty and girly that looked on the jelly plate. And some of these I aren't the greatest. Um, they can't all be, you know, perfect, but I am loving how much fun it is. This one I used the 3x5 jelly plate on an acrylic block, and so I had the jelly plate, sprayed out the green paint, put the butterfly cut out on there, and plastic canvas to get the grid, and then stamped it on here in different areas. I'm thinking that'll be a really good one to cut apart. I'm thinking I can cut a lot of these things, elements out that I do really like. Um, some of these, like this print, I I kept layering and layering to thinking I would get something that I liked, but I didn't. But I kind of like the colors on this side, so I'm okay with it. This one almost looks like a moon. I use the round 8 inch jelly plate. There again is the 8 inch jelly plate layered over. This one has some doilies layered on it. You can see that detail. This is um, obviously one where I cleaned up and then I used the 3x5 print to add a few more things and then this was where I just cleaned it up brayering. Um, and then you can see where I used the 8 inch plate. <laughs> and this is another one where I layered a lot of paint using the 3x5 plate. This has the 8 inch plate. Um, I tried something different on this one. It didn't quite work out the way I wanted. I, I like those colors together. They're really pretty. This you can see I used the 8 inch plate. So even though my tools are really basic, I can get some really fun results. Um, just using the things that I have. Haven't invested in a lot of tools. Um, I am thinking about getting a brayer that's actually made for the jelly paint. I just had this um, brayer that I got a long time ago that I use um, when I'm using adhesive. And then this is a Mod Podge brayer that I was able to find. Um, who people did it. it was kind of rude when I was asking her about well my husband was asking her about a prayer she said you should go to a craft store if you're looking for craft supplies 
<laughs> she obviously is, has never taken a trip inside my brain. My brain, I find craft supplies at the hardware store, at, <laughs> at the beauty store, at the dollar store. Yeah. She could have been nicer about it, but bless her little heart. I, I, I can understand her logic. This was fun technique. I used a comb and kind of just drew in it. And I really like the swirly effect. I um, was really pleased with that effect. It was pretty fun. So these are um, the prints that I've been working on using the jelly plate. You can use a lot of different um, supplies. And I just thought I would share you the tip of you, that you could use um, regular acrylic paint that you can find um, in larger amounts for a less expensive price. It didn't hurt my jelly plate. Of course, we'll see tomorrow. Um, but it's it's the same thing. Um, it's acrylic paint. Um, you all are welcome to correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like the same thing. So that's a little hint. Go find the samples that are marked down half off. You get a, a larger supply. And you know, this is the sad thing. This is how much I've been doing. These were full. And you can see <laughs> I've used half of that. And I've used like a third of that. <laughs> I'm obsessed. Um, I, I've ha had a lot of fun. I have a few more prints that are drying right now. Um, but I, I'm having too much fun. This jelly plate printing thing. I thought, oh, once I get one, maybe I won't be so fascinated with it. Um, but no, I'm enjoying it so much. So, I just thought I would share with you the tip that you can find craft supplies at a hard... I'm babbling again. I'm babbling again. Okay. So, you can find craft supplies anywhere, even a hardware store, and save a little money. I hope you all have enjoyed this video, and I wish you the very best. Signing off from the Wild West. Bye!